What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you something quick and easy that you can throw together for Easter Sunday. This is my recipe for roasted Cornish hens. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. First things first, we're gonna prep all of our veggies that are going along with this Cornish hen. Here I have some onions, celery, and carrots. First item on the prep list is the carrots. I'm just gonna chop the ends off like you see right here, break out the peeler and peel the skin off of the carrots. If you guys don't own one of these potato peelers, you can use a paring knife, but these definitely come in handy. You can find them at Target, Walmart, really any grocery store, and you can buy them on Amazon as well. There we go, we got them nice and peeled. Now we're gonna cut them down to about an inch or so in size, that way they can roast along with our Cornish hen. We're gonna do the same thing with our celery. Make sure you clean your celery. We're gonna cut the ends off of the celery and then cut that down to size as well. Set that aside and then we're gonna prep our onion which I'm gonna quarter and allow that to roast. So basically this is gonna act as a bed or a nest for our hens to sit on top of. That way they get elevated, some air can circulate around them and the skin can get nice and crispy. They're also gonna add some flavor and aromatics to the party. Speaking of aromatics, we got some lemon. We're gonna slice that up as well. Tons of flavor going into this recipe, guys. All the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. Here are our fresh herbs. We got some rosemary, thyme, and parsley. And here are our two beautiful Cornish hens that we've already cleaned off. After you clean them, you wanna go ahead and pat them dry. When you clean them, you wanna make sure you get rid of any bone fragments or cartilage or anything like that. Also, you wanna get rid of the neck and all that stuff that's inside of the cavity of the bird, and then just get that removed, and we're gonna dry it off the best we can with some paper towels. And that step is super important, guys. It's important to dry the skin, that way it can get nice and crispy for you in the oven. We're also gonna do a salt brine on this, so we're gonna season the outside and the inside of the cavity with some kosher salt, and pop that in the refrigerator up to overnight. So you can go anywhere from like two to 24 hours on that. And that's gonna allow the skin to get really dry and that salt to start to penetrate the meat, which is important because you want that seasoning all the way down to the bone on your chicken or hens. Speaking of flavor though, we're gonna go ahead and make our compound herb butter. We're gonna go down with some rosemary, some thyme, some garlic, a little lemon, tons of flavors that just pair really well with poultry. Hell, if we're being honest, these flavors pair really well with just about everything. Great on steak, garlic bread. There's tons of ways to repurpose this butter I'm about to show you, and it's super easy to make. So we're just gonna pluck the leaves off the rosemary and the thyme. If you have some baby thyme and it's really tender like the stems, you can go ahead and just dice them right up. Otherwise, just pluck the leaves off there. Pile them up like you see right here, take out a nice sharp knife, and then we're gonna dice these until they're nice and small, that's what we're looking for. This could be done in a food processor too if you wanna save a little bit of time, but who wants to clean that thing, right? So we're gonna dice this up nice and small like you see right here, a nice fine dice, and then we're gonna add them to our melted butter. We're using one stick of Kerrygold butter for this. We're gonna throw that butter into a medium-sized mixing bowl. To that, we're gonna add our freshly diced rosemary and thyme. We're also gonna crush two cloves of garlic. You could also use minced garlic from the jar if that's what you got, or the garlic paste you guys always see me use. But today we're going with fresh. There goes the herbs. Then you wanna add a little lemon zest for a pop of freshness. It's also gonna add a little touch of acid that'll balance the flavor profile nicely. Another quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients for this recipe can be found in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. After the lemon zest comes the lemon juice, about a teaspoon or two of that. We're also gonna add a pinch of chicken bouillon just to beef up the chicken flavor a little bit. A little touch of smoked paprika, followed by my AP seasoning, which is my all-purpose blend. It's a low sodium all-purpose seasoning. You can get that via the link in my description box. Otherwise, just use a little salt and pepper. Oh man, that's gonna be good. That butter is gonna add so much flavor to these hens. It's also gonna help that skin get nice and brown and crispy. Go ahead and set that aside for a few minutes. Break out your baking dish or casserole dish, whatever you plan to cook these in. This is a nine by 11 casserole dish that I'm using. Hit that with a little avocado oil at the bottom so those veggies don't scorch. And then from there, we're gonna build our bird's nest, going down with the onions, our mirepoix basically, which is onions, carrots, and celery. Next, we're gonna add the lemon on top. And then finally, we're gonna go down with a little garlic and those fresh herbs. We're gonna place those Cornish hens right on top of this mixture. This is a great technique for roasting any kind of poultry. I do this with my turkey wings, obviously the Cornish hens. It's great for spatchcock chicken as well. You really can't go wrong with this method, guys, so give it a try. I do like to add a little oil to the veggies, that way they don't scorch too bad in the oven. And now we're gonna take that compound butter and just massage that all over our bird. 
that's gonna add tons of flavor. Remember we did the dry salt brine earlier, and now we're gonna add this super flavorful compound butter that we seasoned beautifully. Don't be shy with that stuff, guys. It is absolutely money. Make sure you massage it in. Place that into the oven at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of your hens. You wanna check them every once in a while. One thing that I like to do for presentation purposes is to break out a little aluminum foil and wrap the wing tips and the drums. That way they don't get too crispy or scorched in the oven. We wanna really Real nice presentation on these birds. So hit them with some aluminum foil shoes and pop them back in the oven. But first we gotta baste them in all that butter and flavor at the bottom of the dish. You wanna do this three or four times just to make sure that the skin gets nice and crispy and we don't lose any of that flavor that is accumulating in there. Oh man, look at that. Doesn't get much better than that guys. Tons of flavor. Your house is gonna be smelling absolutely amazing. It's Easter and I can't wait to dig into these Cornish hens. And that my friends is how we're looking when we're done. You want your internal temperature of the white meat to be around 165 and the dark meat to be 175 preferably. Next, it's important to let the meat rest a little bit before we carve into it. So what we're gonna do now is make a quick gravy. For that, we're gonna need a skillet over medium heat. We're gonna add one to two tablespoons of butter followed by one to two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. You wanna cook the raw flour taste off for a minute or two, again, working over medium heat. Once you start to see it foaming up like that, you know you've done your job. Now we're gonna add some seasoning, a little salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, things like that. Really, you can season it with whatever you want. You can season it with some Cajun seasoning. You make it kind of like a Cajun style gravy. Now we're gonna add some of those pan drippings to the party because no flavor left behind. This stuff is gonna be absolutely gold going on top of these hens, guys. Trust me on this, this gravy recipe is fantastic. We're gonna mix in those pan drippings. We're also gonna add a little chicken stock here in a second to thin things out a bit. All the specific measurements and ingredients are down below, so make sure you check that out. Super easy gravy, comes together real quick, just in time for those hens to cool off enough to carve into them. And it helps with the presentation, it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. There we go, we got a nice thick gravy-like consistency. Now we're gonna add a splash of heavy cream, give that a mix and season to taste, and then we're gonna set that aside. And now, my friends, it's time to plate this up. That is a beautifully cooked bird. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. Going down with the gravy pour, cause why the hell not? Oh man, look at that. That is a Cornish hen, my friends. Perfect for the holidays. Going down with some fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color. And so the thumbnail looks beautiful. One more little fly over and then I gotta get in there for a taste test. The moment of truth has come. I'm going down with a leg, a little extra gravy. Oh man, doesn't get much better than that, my friends. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give your boy a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.